Hi there, and welcome to Chapter 5.1 from the Introduction to Statistics Think and Do book. And here we talk about some discrete random variables and their associated probability distributions. I'm going to convert to full screen mode. And we will put this the whole way across so you can see it better. All right, very good. So, a discrete random variable is a variable, and we usually denote this variable with the letter X, that has a single numerical value determined by chance. Um, so, for, so it might be, say, the number of heads in three tosses of a coin, or it may be um, the amount of rainfall in a given location for a, a sequence of days, right? Um, and so a discrete random variable is either a finite, like a finite number of values, or countable. You can count them one, two, three, four. It might not stop anywhere particular, but you can count them up. A continuous random variable has outcomes on a continuous scale, right? And these are things like weights, heights, time, distance, or say inches of rain or centimeters of rain, things like that. Um, and a probability distribution is just basically a way of describing the probabilities um, associated with the outcomes from a random variable, right? Now how do we describe the probabilities of the different outcomes for this random variable? And we use a probability distribution. Uh, sometimes it's a table or a graph or a formula. And there are some issues we have to worry about when we talk about continuous random variables, but that is in the next chapter. Okay, so we did this back in chapter 4.2. We, we said, all right, if you flip a coin three times, what's the probability that you get zero heads, one, two, and three? And we built that tree diagram where we had heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. Remember the tree diagram? And we went on with that. And we figured out these probabilities here. And they are um, the ones given right here in this column, P of X. All right, and so this is the probability distribution for the number of heads in three tosses of a coin. The probability of getting zero heads is 0.125. The probability of getting one head is 0.375. So the random variable here, X, is the number of heads, and these are the probabilities. We'll worry about this thing here later. Okay, so here's what here the, there's only two requirements for a probability distribution. And the first off is the sum. That thing, the sum of all the p of x's have to equal one. So that's sum. The addition, you have to add them all up. So you have to add up all the probabilities to get exactly one, and all of the individual probabilities have to be between 0 and 1. So if you get a negative probability or a probability greater than 1, uh, it's not a probability distribution. And so to check to see that we have a probability distribution here, we add up all of the probabilities, 5, 10, 15, 20, 0, carry the 2, 4, 11, 18, 20, 0, carry the 2, 3, 6, 9, 10, 0, carry the 1, 1. So good. They all add up to 1 as required, and if you look at all the probabilities, these are all between 0 and 1. So good, we have a probability distribution. Check. If we want to calculate the mean value of a probability distribution, we use this, and basically when I say mean value, I say if you look at this, look at this table, um, number of heads and three tosses of a coin. If I said what's the average number of heads in three tosses of a coin, it might seem intuitively correct to be one and a half, right? If it's a 50-50 coin, and you flip it three times over and over, then I imagine the average number of heads would be 1.5. But we have a way of calculating this value specifically from the probability distribution. And the formula is this, formula 5.1. The mu there is the mean, just just to remind you, that's pronounced mu cal. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add up, we're going to take all the variable values 
multiply them by their respective probabilities, and then add them all up. So if I want to go back to my example there with the three tosses of a coin, and I wanted to calculate the mean number of heads in three tosses, that's what this red table is over here. I'll get rid of that. So here's my x values. You can have 0, 1, 2, or 3. Here's all the probabilities. These came straight from right there. And then what I do is I take each x value, multiply it by the probability. 0 times 0.125 is 0. 1 times 0.375 is 0.375. 2 times 0.375 is 0 0.75. 3 times 0.125 is 0.375. And so the trick is, when I, once I have all of these x times p of x's, it is to add them up. And when I add them up, I have a mean of 1.50, as um, hopefully you expected. Okay, so round off rule when using the equation, when we're using this thing, equation 5.1, you want to round the final answer to one more decimal place than the actual x values. The expected value of a discrete random variable, let's, actually, let's not lose this. If you see this formula for the mean, it's the sum of the x times p of x. The expected value is just another name for the mean. All right. This also equals the mean. All right. Same formula. Um, but in expected value, you think of it more of in, say, like, uh, gambling, where there's some value associated with each outcome. So, for example, suppose I buy a raffle ticket. There are 200 being sold. I buy one. It cost me $10. The sponsors of this raffle then randomly select one of the tickets, and if they pick mine, I get $100. Or they give $100 to whoever wins. Um, but if they don't pick mine, I get nothing. So what is the expected value of this raffle to me? So well, the reason this is called expected value as opposed to just the mean is I have my outcomes, which I categorize into win or don't win. But then I have the value of those outcomes. And if I win, it's a $90 value, specifically because they may give me 100 but I spent 10 Don't forget about that 10 that you spent up front. If I win, that feels like a $90 plus. If I lose, it feels like a $10 negative, right? If I don't win, I guess another way of saying losing, I guess. Um, so then I take the probabilities. The probability that I win, there's only one prize selected, so it's 1 out of 200. So the probability I don't win is 199 out of 200. And these probabilities have to add up to 1, which they do. So to get the expected value, I take the sum of the x times p of x's. Okay. So here I'm going to take 90 times 0 0.005, and I get 0.45. I'm going to take negative 10 times 0.995, and that gives me negative 9.95. Now when I add these up, right, that's the summation part right here. I get negative 9.5. So what that means is that if I play this, if I play this raffle over and over and over, the same scenario over and over many, many times, on average I would lose $9.50 per game. Right? That doesn't mean because I'll never actually lose $9.50. I'll either make a profit of 90 or lose 10. But the expected value in terms of the average over the long run is negative 9.5. Another way of saying that is I could either buy one of these lottery tickets for $10 or I could just give the sponsors $9.50. To me, those are equivalent actions, right? And either way, I sort of expect to lose $9.50. Go to the your, turn, your turn, there's a carnival game. You pay $5 to play and there's some fish in a, in a little pool and they go around and you try to catch one. There are a hundred of these plastic fish. There are 10 red fish with a $10 prize in them, 20 blue fish with a $5 prize, 30 green fish with a $2 prize, 40 orange fish with a $1 prize. So you pay your $5, 
Drop in your line and hope for the best. You're not really going to fish for any particular one. Maybe you don't know the prize structure. But you're just going to take the first one that happens to bump into your, your line. So it's a, it's a random selection. And I want to calculate the expected value of this game to you. So I list my outcomes. And so the outcomes don't always have a, a value themselves. Red, like the outcomes here, those aren't numbers. Red, blue, green, or orange. Those are different colored fish. But they do have values um, to you as the player. Since the red fish, you win a $10 prize and you spent $5 to play the red fish. If you get a red fish, that counts as a plus 5, right? If you get a blue fish, you get a $5 prize. But it costs you 5 to play, so that's really a 0, right? And then... If you get a green fish, what's the prize on a green fish? It's a $2 prize. But you spent 5, so it's actually a negative 3 to you. Finally, the orange fish, they have $1 prizes in them, but again, you spent 5, so that's a negative 4. So don't forget these negatives. They're very important. They indicate winning or losing. Then the probabilities come from how many fish there are. There are 10 red fish, so that's where this... 10 comes right there. There are 20 blue fish. That's where that 20, 20 out of 100. 30 green fish, so 0 0.30 out of 100 is the probability there. 40 orange fish, so 40 out of 100 for the orange. Okay, okay so and then I take my values, my x values, multiply them times the probability, put them in their own little column here. So after I do that for all four outcomes, I get this list of values times their probabilities, and then I add them. And I get negative two. So the idea is, if you play this game over and over and over, on average you'll lose two dollars per game. And then, um, I have this little extra question here for you. You take your nephew to the carnival, and he wants to play this game. I do this to bring my sons. And I'm not a big carnival fan, so a lot of times I'll just try to buy them out. So instead of paying the five dollars for for him to play, you offer him a cash buyout, right? You're like, why don't you just take the cash and we don't play at all? And so the question is, what is a fair cash settlement? Well, the totally fair thing to do um, would be to give your nephew three dollars. Because right? that's sort of what you expect to lose. You, you know, you start with five, um, and you get two back. So it's sort of a three-dollar investment. So you just give him three. He has a guaranteed three. You're only out three instead of five. So that feels pretty good. But um, if you give him anything more than three and less than five, you still you're still better off because you're going to lose five one way or the other because you're you're paying for him to play. Um, so anything less than five is good for you. Um, and anything bigger than three is is also a winner. So um, that's pretty fair. I mean, if you if you only gave him two, then he'd probably be better off playing the game because his expected value is three. So that's three going to him. So you need to get three or more to make it fair to him, and less than five to make it good for you. Right, so it depends on what you call fair, but everyone's a winner if you just. Give them somewhere between three and five dollars cash. So that's how to bribe your way out of a carnival game with your nephew, and it also wraps up chapter 5.1 um, for discrete probability distributions. So I will catch up with you in chapter 5.2 where we work on the binomial probability distribution. All right.